couple of months ago, we took delivery of two crew cars to help drive our gear over the thousands of miles we travel to make the programme. It not only offers us essential transport, it also gives us a chance to put them through their paces and tell you exactly what they're like to live with. The first to arrive was this Mazda CX-7 crossover. During its time with us, it's already met a Chevrolet Camaro, a Morgan Supersport and looked a bit sheepish next to a Land Rover Discovery 4. But it doesn't just sit around posing for photos. Since we've had it, we've covered nearly 9,000 miles and in that time, the trip computer has barely moved from 35 miles per gallon. Some people in the office think it's a little bit disappointing to have any modern diesel that doesn't achieve 40 miles per gallon, and they've probably got a point. But when you consider how hard this gets used, and the fact that Mazda's quoted combined MPG figure is 37 miles per gallon, we've got admirably close, and for a car that's got nearly 300 pounds feet of torque, 35 miles per gallon isn't that bad at all. Another aspect of the CX-7 that splits opinion is the diddly little sat-nav. People like it because it's actually got quite a high resolution screen and you can enter full postcodes when you're trying to find somewhere, but it gets cussed because the screen is incredibly small and every now and then it picks a fairly wayward route from one place to the other. Its defence though is that as part of the £27,000 price of the CX-7, it's free, completely standard. Inside, the interior is proving to be hard wearing and easy to clean, and the 455 litre boot is plenty big enough and has decent luggage hooks for tying kit down. But the boot hides what we've experienced to be the CX-7's biggest flaw. It's fitted with an AdBlue system, which means that under here, there's a 15 litre tank of a liquid chemical that gets injected into the car's exhaust system to help reduce emissions. It's been working perfectly and we didn't have any problems with it until we took it in to a dealer to have it refilled as part of the car's first service. It ended up taking our local dealer four days to get some AdBlue stock in and fill up our little tank, which when you consider that the car won't actually switch on when it's run out, isn't exactly ideal. Their excuse was that the AdBlue chemical needs special handling and special transportation, but we've all seen normal garage forecourts stocking AdBlue in standard plastic bottles, so that's a little bit hard to believe. We were left with the impression that either Mazda dealers need more training on how to deal with AdBlue, or they should just show us how to fill it up ourselves. On the plus side, that service and the car's really long-winded AdBlue refill only cost a couple of hundred quid. So, you know, it was easily forgotten about and once it was back on the road, we were happy again. The engine's torquey, the gear change is tight, the brakes are firm, the ride is comfy, the handling and the body control are really tidy. In fact, the only criticism we've got about the way it drives is one that we've had from the very first day it was delivered, and that's that the steering is too light. It just doesn't instill the car with a sense of gravity and a sense of meatiness like you'd hope it would. So, despite the tiddly little sat-nav and the four-day long service, we're perfectly happy with our big, comfy, well-equipped, reasonably economical Mazda CX-7. We'll upload another video fairly soon to let you know of any new developments.